In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, some product usage, and a complete review of the Ymaxit 14 inch portable touchscreen monitor. I'm really excited to get to this, so let's get started. All right, here she is again, the Ymaxit M1410CT 14 inch portable touchscreen monitor. Kind of like I like it, there's not color and everything on the box to make this more expensive. Plain white box, could have been manila, but no matter what, plain white box, why max it, UPC serial number, description here, nothing much along the side. The bottom kind of shows you 14 inch IPS panel, FHD, 1920 by 1080, USB type C, foldable kickstand, and power delivery. Same thing along this side, same thing on the bottom, nothing along the back. Have some foam here. I'm gonna set this aside just for right now. That's incredibly light, by the way. This only weighs 1.29 pounds. Okay, so then here we have a portable touchscreen monitor user manual kind of goes over everything that it includes and then how to connect it to everything. I'll show you all that in this video. Definitely good to have though. Then a USB type C cable, USB type C on both ends and the cable is 40 inches. A Ymaxit business card. Please kindly contact us. That's nice. I like it when they include screen wipes to just clean the screen off. A USB to USB type C cable. It seems to be USB 3.0. And this cable is 39.5 inches, almost 40. And then HDMI, gold plated HDMI cable mini HDMI, definitely nice to have. And this cable is 47.5 inches. And then we have the AC power adapter, do that right over here. Ymax it switching adapter, 0.4 amps max. And then over here, a USB 2.0 or 3.0 connection. Okay. And there's nothing else in this box, so I'm going to set this aside for right now. And then we have, this is a beautiful looking screen here. So why max it along the bottom? Along the back, feels aluminum, feels metal. Nice back panel there. Helps it to keep it nice and cool. Then M1410. CT, some more information here, and then portable USB type C only HDR monitor. So it is HDR, and then here is that kickstand. Ah, oh, look at that, and then it is stiff, it's not all wobbly. So maybe over time, as, as you use it, it might become less stiff, but it feels nice so far. Along the back, again, you can adjust how you want it to sit. If you want it to lay down completely like that, totally up to you. And it is completely adjustable, it seems. And because this leg is very strong, very rigid, it does not, you can keep lowering it if you just want to see at extreme angles. So that's nice. So coming around the side here, here they tell you HD, USB Type-C, USB Type-C. In case you were wondering what those ports were, we'll go ahead and connect the USB Type-C connection for power. Okay, Y max it. Then no signal because we don't have anything connected to it. And then we can connect it to something like the switch. Let's connect it down here. All right, now don't freak out. At first, you won't be able to use these. You have to actually disconnect them. Then you can start playing any game you want. All right, 
and I'm not really going to play for real, just wanted to show you. So, anyway, enough with that. Just wanted to show you how that worked. So, to mention, the sound is coming from the monitor, not from the switch. Then over here, I'm going to disconnect it. We can see on this side, there is the exit button to get out of the screen, the volume rocker, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So, ton of options there. Along the bottom here, they have a rubber stopper, rubber feet to keep it from moving when you do stand it up, as well as over here on the foot, and over here as well. Now, if you want to use it as a second monitor for your laptop, you can as well. So we'll go ahead and sit this over here, and then we'll grab that USB Type-C cable. Connect that back into the monitor and the other into the laptop. And now we have two screens, so you could set it up so that they're mirrored or Extend these displays, show one, show only on one, show only on two. So we'll do extend. And then keep the settings. So now my laptop is the main screen and then we can have this one as the secondary. So if I open up Chrome, and we'll move it over Maybe I should move it over over here. It's kind of hard to move it over sometimes. But then you can have this screen for doing what you want. So here we'll just go to This awesome YouTube site. Welcome to this fight for you. In this video, I'm we can play games, we can do whatever we want. Unfortunately, my battery's dying on the laptop. So we saw it connect to a switch and to a laptop through USB Type-C connection. Of course, we can connect the same way through a PC, but we can also go through HDMI. So we have the mini HDMI connection right over here. Then it goes to a full size HDMI. So we can either use the onboard video of the motherboard if your CPU supports onboard video or on dive video and you actually have that port on your motherboard or we can use the video card. If you're going to use the motherboard, make sure it's enabled and you have the driver installed as well. So we'll plug it in through the HDMI on the video card. And then we'll plug it in through the HDMI on the screen and then you could see that it is now enabled. So anything we do, it acts as a second monitor. So I could bring that over here. And if we wanted to, we can watch that video over here. It's time to 
take advantage prices falling from the sky even. Oop, I stopped it. No, I'm just pausing for a minute. It works well, the colors are great. So that's a preview of another video. But anyway, right it seems to work very well. If you're looking for a time within these reasons, so, so far so good. The volume is coming from here again. Now using that same HDMI connection that we used on the computer, we'll go ahead and connect it to a PS5. It's a very tight connection. Okay, and then go ahead, turn on the PS5. And then so now because we've changed the type they want us to adjust the display area that's good and then we can play whatever game we want or you know just do whatever we want on here so I'll go ahead and start this up real quick so this is me Obviously, I can't see very well what I'm doing, but that's okay. I understand we have another so this works perfectly fine. Now, it's a touchscreen, so I don't know if that means... No, I can't do anything here. But for anything that is touchscreen capable, this is going to work perfectly fine for you. So, switch, PS5, laptop, desktop. So, I had to turn off all the lights so that I can bring you in a little bit closer to my workstation. On the left over here is where I do all my video and photo editing. And then down here is the Ymaxit screen. I'm going to do a little Steam gameplay so that you can see the color and everything. And I'm going to do it off of the camera rather than doing a screen capture. And the sound is also going to be coming from the Ymaxit as well so that you can hear how good or bad it sounds. So I'm going to first bring over Steam over here. And we're going to go ahead and play... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just a quickie, I just got it. The colors on the camera seem a little bit off to what you see in true life. Okay, this looks awesome. I'm gonna skip it so that I don't get a copyright notice. The volume on the screen is 100%, so it's not incredibly loud. All right, so it plays nicely. Now mind you, this is a 20 year old game or something like that, but it looks beautiful. It may not look 100% as nice as it does in real life on the camera, but it does look beautiful. First time I've played it, so I don't know all the controls just yet. Anyway, so a few things to take note of when you have it connected to a device as a secondary monitor. So as I'm editing this video, I come to realize a portion of the screen that I didn't before, and I'm gonna walk you through it real quick. So I'm recording on the PC screen, and then here is the Ymaxit. So one thing you're gonna to want to do if you connect this to your PC and you want to use the touchscreen capability of the Ymaxit is first off, you're going to go click on the start button and it'll be basically the same thing on Windows 10 or 11. Then you'll type in tablet, then you'll click 
tablet PC settings. Okay. Then over here on the drop down, you're going to click your display, the Y Max it. Then you're going to click setup. Now pay close attention here. Tap this screen with a single finger to identify it as the touch screen. If this is not the tablet PC screen, press enter. This isn't. Okay. Now we can see that same text here, kind of sort of my camera is having some issues, but now we'll tap on this screen, making windows know that this is the touch screen. Okay. Now alone doing that now, this will function perfectly as a touch screen as it should. And then the volume will also work over here as well. And the brightness, as you can see the little lever right over here, the little bar showing brightness going up and down or volume. And I can show that on the right over here with the little rocker down over here on the side I showed you earlier. And now to test the 10 point touch test using a tool called desktop. Okay. We'll click on tools. Then we'll click multi touch test. I'll drag it over here. So this, okay, perfect. So this you could see now I have 10, four fingers on there. It might be slightly hard to see. Let me bring you in at a different angle. Hopefully this screen, this view is a little bit better. So here we use 10 fingers. You can see pinky right over there. And we'll try the same over here. There we go. It's hard to show you, but all 10 of the points are showing. So two thumbs up on that one. The touch screen will work perfectly fine over here. And just so that you could see that I'm working on the same screen, I'll just move this over here and it'll come into here. Now you can do it in vertical or portrait, whichever mode you'd like. I'm just showing you here because a lot of you prefer in this mode than for running discord, for writing documents, for doing with whatever. It actually works out perfectly well in this mode as well. Then of course, if you wanted to, you could drop it over here. Now it won't sense the fact that you turned it. So you have to come over here into windows display settings, select the second monitor being that guy right over there, the Y max it come down over here and then change it from portrait or portrait flipped to let's say landscaped. Then you can see how the whole monitor just changed and it works perfectly fine for that as well. So we've gone over a ton of scenarios on the Ymaxit M1410CT display. It is a nice display. It works very well. And mind you, what I love about this unit is, mind you, I may not have been able to show it incredibly well in this video because of lighting and everything, but the colors are great. The sound is great. The fact that they include so many different types of cables, I think is amazing so that you can kind of connect it to everything and you're not left out if you don't have that one magical, maybe USB type C connection. We all don't have that. So they give you a lot of great options there as well. One of the great options is the fact that she is touchscreen and we can have it for games. We can have it for chat. We can have it for documentation. We can use it as a primary monitor, maybe in case your laptop monitor is dead, or we can use it as a secondary monitor. As I showed you, the connectivity features are awesome because it'll connect to a PlayStation an Xbox, a switch, all the consoles. Now on the downside, in order for it to connect to a smartphone, let's say a iOS device, you do need to buy an adapter or a converter. And in order for it to connect to Android, there is a very small compatibility list. Unfortunately, the Google Pixel flagship will not work. It will work on Samsung phones. Unfortunately, I don't have one and I don't have the adapter for iOS. If you need it, I'll go ahead and flash it on the screen so you can check it out as well as in the description below. Now, the downfalls is the fact that while it is an awesome system, it does not have battery. So if you wanted to go on a trip, unfortunately, you do need to have some sort of outlet or maybe connect it to your laptop as power through USB-C and then connect another USB-C to 
the Switch or the PlayStation or whatever portable device you can get. Mind you, PlayStation isn't incredibly portable, but the Switch is, so it will work. But again, you need something to power it. The other downfall, which to me isn't tremendous, mind you, I am used to playing on 120 or 140 hertz. This will only do 60 hertz, but it is again a portable device. You're playing at 1920 by 1080 or you're watching your screen at 1920 by 1080. So there is going to be a little give and take, you have to imagine that. Now, I reviewed earlier, maybe last year, an Asus portable monitor and it was awesome. It had battery power and everything, but it didn't have a touchscreen. It had 120 or 40 Hertz, but again, it didn't have a touchscreen. The touchscreen is pretty awesome. If you don't want to have to open up your laptop to do whatever, you can just touch on the screen here and I'm on Discord. So maybe the screen I'm on. All right. So, you know, it is touchscreen. So you can do whatever you want there. You don't need to reach out and grab your laptop. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this screen. Awesome screen, beautiful color, awesome sound that comes directly from the screen. Touch screen. I love it. This is definitely going with me on trips. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a nice carrying case. You probably have to buy that separately. But again, it is awesome. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'd love to get your feedback. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't forget to ask me down below. I respond to everything. This is Iggy with This Bites for You Up. See you guys.